After testing 32 of the most highly rated lip stains with all day wear tests, I finally have a definitive ranking of the very worst to the very best lip stains I have ever tried. So let's jump right into this lip stain showdown. 32nd place goes to the A2 Dear Darling Water Gel Tint. I picked up the shade Watermelon Red, but it didn't really turn out to look like that on my lips at all. I think that this translated to be more of a bright, punchy coral, which I just don't love on myself personally. The texture of this is a super thin gel. It's definitely something that needs a balm on top in order to make it comfortable to wear. Immediately after applying this, I end up with a pretty uneven patchy result. So I would say I get sheer to medium levels of pigment with this and a natural finish. But it's not because the levels of pigmentation are versatile with this product. It's again, because they're patchy and uneven. So that sheer to medium pigment level is happening all at once. As many of you probably already know, I am such a huge fan of more of a sheer lip stain. So I wanted to see what all of these looked like both before and after blotting them. And this one just ends up looking even patchier and just like a complete mess after I blot it. So I would not recommend doing that with this one if you were still going to pick it up. I also wanted to show you guys what each of these stains looked like with a gloss applied on top because not only do I love a sheer lip stain, I love a sheer shiny lip stain. So I will make sure to pop that footage in for any of you that also like to wear lip stains in a similar way. But the product that I use to add that glossy shine is the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Balm in the shade Crystal Happy Kiss. This is a very sheer light pink, so it didn't really alter the color of any of the stains. I mean, it would have made them a tiny bit pinker, but if anything, I feel like it just made them a bit more vibrant and added a deliciously glossy sheen. Like I told you guys in the beginning of this video, I also did a wear test for every single one of these stains. So what I did was apply the lip stain in the morning, wear it until lunch, eat lunch, capture footage of what it looked like after eating, and then reapply add that Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kiss Balm, and then wear it until the end of the day for the final check-in. I really thought that I was gonna see a lot of these stains hold up pretty well after eating a meal, but pretty much none of them did. So I don't know, maybe I'm just someone that like smudges my lips more than I thought when I eat, but because of that, I wanted to make sure that I reapplied and then wore them for the rest of the day up until the end of the night so that you could get a feel for wear without eating interfering with that process at all. This is one that I would say I can get longer wear with, but it's not one that I want to get longer wear with because I just don't like the way that this looks. I also hate the smell, she says as she sniffs it. It has a very intense grape, cool lady smell or like a grape jolly rancher. I know some people love that sort of thing, but I personally do not. So because of everything that I just said, I will not use this again. That is why this got 32nd place in the showdown. 31st place is a very similarly titled product. It is the A2 Dear Darling Water Tint, not to be confused with the gel tint we just talked about. Well, I think it's fine if you confuse them because I obviously didn't like this one either. I got this one in the shade Cherry Aid, which I think is a beautiful shade. It's like a deep kind of pinky cool toned red that yeah, I think looks like cherry stained lips. So I love that aspect of it, but that's the only aspect I love. The texture of this is incredibly watery. And because of that, I feel like it makes the application process a little bit messy. It's so thin and watery that it slips and slides around my lips and settles and dries down in a different spot than I initially applied it. And because of the formula of this, this is one of those stains that kind of dries down to feel like nothing on your lips. So you absolutely need a balm. It's one that I would say you can get light to medium pigment with. I do think that this is also a bit uneven, but not as bad as the water gel tint. And this one has like a natural matte finish. Similar to the water gel tint, this is something that I can get longer wear with, but it fades pretty patchy and unevenly. So I don't want to wear this for a long time. And this also just has the grossest artificial grape smell. So <sighs> this one ended up being a fail for me and just not one that I want to reuse given and all of the other amazing lip stains that I tried out while making this video. In 30th place, we have the Peri Para Ink Airy Velvet. I have the shade 21 Fluffy Peach, which is a warm toned, light, slightly peachy pink. This is a thin, dry cream. It's not something that I find to be conditioning at all. So I definitely need a balm to make this wearable. And this is a lip stain that delivers maximum color payoff. It's intensely pigmented and it also has a matte finish. So that is why I rated this 
so low in this video, it's not because it's a bad product, it's just because it's the exact opposite of what I am looking for in a lip stain. So just keep that in mind as I continue on with this video. Just because I rank something low doesn't mean it's bad, and it might actually be a product that is exactly what you're looking for, even if it's not what I'm looking for. And I think that that's the total beauty of videos like this and why I love doing showdowns. My hope is that these kinds of videos help you to find what you are looking for in a given product category, even if it's not for me. This is one of the few lip stains in this video that I would truly consider to be longer wear. It fades quite a bit, so keep that in mind. You're not going to end up with that same intensely pigmented look as the day goes on for hours and hours, but in saying that, you get a much better result at the end of the day than most of these other stains. Oh my god, another reason why I had to rank this so low is because the smell is awful. This smells intensely of artificial peach. It's like those peach rings, but with a little sprinkle of chemicals in it too. I don't know about you, but that's not what I want to rub on my lips. So I won't use this again, but like I was saying, you may be someone that loves a high pigment matte stain with long wear that smells like peach candy. And if you do, hopefully you found something you want to try. In 29th place, we have the ColourPop Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain. I got the shade Ice Pop, which I think looks unbelievably stunning in the swatch photos that they have for this product, but it wasn't giving that on my lips. On me, this ends up looking like a very bright, warm pink, and it's just not something that I find to be the most flattering. This has a lightweight cream texture that has that kind of classic wet lip stain feel before you blot it. After blotting, it kind of feels like nothing, but at the same time is a little bit sticky. It's a strange, feel and it's something that is not conditioning and definitely needs a balm. Before blotting, I would consider this to be full pigment with more of a satin finish. I was definitely disappointed that this didn't end up looking as glossy as I was hoping it to based on the photos and based on the name of this product. And after blotting, it was even less close to having a glossy finish. I would say it just looks more glowy after I blot and has sheer to light pigment. On me, this is not long wear at all and the most offensive thing about this product is the smell and taste. What the heck? This literally tasted like I was putting chemicals on my lips. Just chemicals, no fruit, no floral, no nothing, just chemicals. <laughs> Simply cannot recommend avoiding this enough. In 28th place, we have the Peri Para Ink Velvets, and I picked up the shades 18 Star Plum Pink and 28 Mauveful Nude. Star Plum Pink is a cool toned pink and Mauveful Nude is a cool toned mauve. The formula of this one is notably thicker than the Ink Airy Velvet, so if you're wondering the difference between the two, Ink Airy has that thinner dry feel, Ink Velvet has that thicker velvet cream texture. This may be one that you're able to forego a balm with, but for me, I do still think it feels a little bit dry and I need a balm. Similar to the Ink Airy Velvets, I would say that you get maximum color pay off with these. They're intensely pigmented, but I think that you get more of a natural matte finish than a flat dry matte. When I blot these out, I can get them to have more medium levels of pigmentation and they have this like soft diffused finish. It's definitely giving me liquid lipstick vibes. Aside from looking pretty patchy after eating, this holds up pretty well all day and I can definitely get long wear. And thank God these do not have the same chemically peach smell that the Ink Airy Velvets have. They definitely still have like a sweet artificial candy scent, but it's it's not as intense and it's not offensive like the Ink Airy Velvets. I kind of like it. It's just kind of like sweet candy and I can't taste anything on my lips with this one, which makes a big difference for me. So out of the two Ink Velvet products from Peri Para, I definitely prefer these, but in saying that, it's still not a product that I'm going to reach for again, given that, again, it's the opposite of what I am personally looking for. 27th place, we have the Romand Blur Fudge Tint. I have the shade 07 Cool Rose Up, which is a dark cool toned pink. This is a light weight dry cream that I think definitely feels very powdery and drying on my lips, so I need quite a bit of lip balm to make this feel comfortable. This is a high pigment product that isn't really something you need to blot out because it dries down quickly to have a completely matte finish, but if you wanted to sheer it out a little bit, you can do so. I do not get long wear with this. I was surprised because I feel like these really dry, intensely pigmented products tend to hold up better than the sheer glossier ones, but it's just not one that I get super long wear with. The smell of this is nice. It's kind of hard to put my finger on. It's like a only subtly there sweet scent. I like how it smells, but I won't use it again. In 26th place, I have the Etude Fixing Tint. I have the shade 7 Cranberry Plum and 11 Rose Blending, which actually end up to look quite similar. It's just that Rose Blending is a little bit deeper, but they're both these warmer cranberry-like shades. These have a thin cream texture, 
texture that I do not find to be conditioning at all, so I definitely need a balm. And they are highly pigmented with a natural matte finish. Again, this isn't really a type of product where you need to blot because they dry down quickly, but you can shear them out a bit to have more of, I would say, a light to medium level of pigment. And while these don't wear well after eating, they do hold up really well otherwise, and I can definitely get long wear with these. These surprisingly, have no apparent smell or taste, which is great, but I'm not a high pigment matte kind of gal, so I won't be reaching for these again. In 25th place, we have the 3CE Velvet Lip Tint. I have the shade Pink Peak, which I think is hideous on me. It's a very bright, almost neon kind of orangey, corally pink. I don't like it. This has a velvet cream texture that is thicker, but not too heavy and feels relatively comfortable, but it's still something that I prefer to wear with a balm. This is highly pigmented with a matte finish. And again, is not really something that you need to blot, but if you want to, you can get this to have more of light to medium levels of pigmentation. This one is not long wear for me. And in terms of smell, I would say it also has like a subtly there sweetness that doesn't offend me at all. It's kind of nice. You could not pay me to wear this again. If I had a flattering shade with a gloss on top, it might be something that I enjoy reaching for, but I don't feel the need to purchase it in a different shade since I have so many other stains here that worked out so well for me. But I know a lot of people really love this formula in particular. So if you're someone that's looking for that high pigment matte finish lip stain, then this may be one to look into. You guys, I swear my hair is expanding by the second. It is so humid out today. I didn't even bother to do anything to it in terms of styling because I knew this would happen. Skipping lion. 24th place goes to good old Benefit Benetton. This does come in, I think, at least a couple different shades. This one is the OG, so it's rose tinted. It's a really, really gorgeous, slightly cool toned rosy red. Oh, I think it's beautiful. But this has a similar issue to the Etude Water Tint, where it has that super thin, watery texture and it kind of slips and slides and moves around so that you end up getting uneven results, especially because it has that almost instant dry down. So because of that, this is obviously something you'll need to balm with. And this one I would say is very sheer to light in terms of pigment. This is also one that despite not holding up well after eating, I can get longer wear with. It's just not something I can even stomach reaching for again because Oh my God, the smell. This is another that smells so chemically to me. It's disgusting. It's like floral chemicals and you taste the floral chemical. It's not just the smell. Yuck. 23rd place goes to the A2 Dear Darling Oil Tint. I have the shades Red Oil and Plum Berry. Red Oil looks like it would show up to be a really pretty sheer red, but on me, it literally does not look like anything. Like, yes, give us nothing. Plum Berry, on the other hand, is quite pigmented. It's a really beautiful ruby red. This is like a hybrid between a serum and an oil. It has a very thin, slippy consistency. And even though it's more conditioning than those drier, full pigment matte options, it still isn't something that feels super nice on my lips to the point where I want to reach for this and wear it all the time. Again, I think the Plum Berry shade does look beautiful initially. It has that medium to full pigment, a really glossy finish, which I love, of course. And this is a product that I can blot to look more light to medium in terms of pigment with a satin finish. Unfortunately, this one is not long wear at all. It basically completely disappears from my lips. And this definitely does have that peach ring candy smell, but it's more subtle than some of the other more intensely scented options. You can taste it though. You can. So this was closer to being something that I was really going to love, but just not quite there. 22nd is the newly launched Benefit Moisturizing Dewy Lip Tint. I picked up two shades. The first is Summer Fling, which I would consider to be a true mauve. The second is Tutti Fruity, which is a very bright neon warm pink. This has a thin cream texture, but it's not a cream texture that's really soft or moisturizing. So I definitely need a balm with it. Before I blot this, it has four full pigment with a satin finish. And then after blotting, it has light to medium pigment with more of a glowy finish. And this is one that's truly long wear for me. So if it wasn't for the smell slash taste, I definitely would want to reach for these again. But these also taste and smell just like gross floral. Not as bad as the original Benefit Benetint, but still I'm like, no. In 21st place, we have the Dayzeke Water Blur Tint. They did send me this entire collection, which comes in varying shades of pink. So I will swatch all of those out for you. I thought a few of these shades were so, so pretty. So I was bummed that I didn't end up liking these more than I did. The texture of this is slightly thicker and it's like a powdery suede-ish cream that is dry and definitely needs a balm. That was a lot of descriptors. 
colors. These are highly pigmented with a matte finish. You can shear them out to be a bit more medium if you want to blot, but regardless, they're very matte. These ones did not end up being long wear on me at all, and they have such an interesting smell. Immediately what comes to mind for me are those scented markers. You know the scratch and sniff markers we used to use back in grade school? That's what these smell like to me. Won't use these again. Number 20 goes to the Lily by Red Coating Tint. I have the shade 07, which is a really pretty bright cherry red. This has a gel cream texture that I do not need a balm with. It's fully pigmented. It has a really glossy finish. And if I want to blot this out, it looks light to medium in terms of pigmentation and gives me a nice glowy finish. These are not long wear, which isn't a huge issue for me. So I would totally use this again if it did not have that intense peach rain candy smell. What is up with that? Oh, this one's especially bad. 19th place goes to the Dayzeek Juicy Dewy Tint. I have the shade 05, which is a warm pink that kind of reminds me of fruit punch, like a pink fruit punch, if that was a thing. I actually really like the shade. I think it's pretty. This has a thin, slightly slippy gel texture that doesn't feel fully dry like the others. It's definitely more comfortable, but still something I prefer with a balm. After initially applying, I would say I get light to medium pigment with a satin finish and after after blotting, I get sheer to light pigment with a glowy finish. This is not long wear on me, but like I was just saying, that wouldn't bother me if it were not for the smell taste. Smell slash taste. I don't know why I just made that one word. The smell isn't super bad. Like it's fruity artificial candy. It's the fact that I can really taste this one in my mouth. So it will not be one that I use again. In 18th place, we have the Romand Juicy Lasting Tints. I have the shades 25 Bear Grape and 38 Bear Fig, both of which are cool tones toned purpley pinks. Bare Fig is just steeper. These have a moussey gel cream texture that is definitely more comfortable than others, but not enough for me to forego a balm. Before blotting, these look medium to like medium slash full in terms of pigment with a satin finish. And after blotting, they have light to medium levels of pigment with more of a natural finish. I don't consider these to be super long wear because despite there being some areas of my lips where there's a good amount of pigment left at the end of the day, there are others that look really patchy. And these have a very noticeable art artificial grape smell and taste, so these are not ones I'm going to reach for again. In 17th place, we have the absolute cutest little stains in this entire video. These are the Colorgram Fruity Glass Tints. I have the shades Lovely Raspberry, which is a lovely raspberry shade, and Heartful Mulberry, which is more of a purpley pink. These have a soft gel cream texture, and they're comfortable enough for me to not use a balm. Before blotting, they have medium to full pigment with a shiny finish, and after blotting, they have have light to medium pigment with a glowy finish. These are not long wear and they fade so strange on my lips. They're very patchy and I feel like you can see little spots and lines of pigment speckled all over my lips. These also have an artificial grape taste and smell, but it's not as intense as the Roman tints we just talked about. So even though there's a lot of good about these, they're just not a tint that I feel the need to use again, given the others that are coming up in this video that I love a lot more. Next up, we have the Hyper Viral Milk Makeup Cool water jelly tint. I have the shade Burst, which is a very cool tone, very purpley pink. This has such an interesting texture. It obviously has this, I mean, what made it go viral, jelly-like applicator, but it's not something that feels super jelly-like on my lips. Like I can feel that there's this strange jelly applicator, but it's not like the texture of it. It's like a jelly gloss. I love the feeling of that. This is just kind of nothing, which would be totally fine for me because again, I love popping a gloss on top of all of these. I just feel like the pigment is too uneven for me. I think just because of how large this applicator is, when I'm applying this and trying to get even pigment, I end up with areas that are darker and more saturated than others. If you are able to get even pigment, I would say you can get sheer all the way up to full pigment with this and it has a natural matte finish. I can also get long wear with this and there is no apparent smell or taste. So this may be something that is right up your alley and something you would really love. I just think that I would rather use something that I know I can get consistent even pigmentation with. 15th place goes to the Victoria Beckham Bitten Lip Tint. I have the shade Cherie, which is like a brownish mauve. This feels like a very thin, slightly watery gel that is comfortable, but still needs a balm. It's not really something that needs to be blotted because of how it dries down. And when it's dried down, it has sheer to, I 
would say light pigment with a glowy finish. This is not long wear and does not have any smell or taste. This was actually something that was in a favorites video of mine over a year ago at this point, but that's because this was the first lip stain or one of the first lip stains that I had ever tried. So I was like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. I haven't really ever used anything like this, but obviously I have since tested out so many other lip stains. So I don't feel the need to keep this in my collection anymore, given that this is in 15th place. And there are a lot of others that I think are just amazing. I have to give a quick shout out to this packaging though. I am obsessed with tortoise print and it has that going on on the cap here. And it's very luxe, heavier packaging really pretty. In 14th place, we have the Flower Beauty Bitten Lip Stain. I have the shade Sweet, which is a deeper, very bold, fuchsia-like pink. And this I would describe as a thin, wet liquid, but it's not as watery as something like Benetint or a Too Dear Darling. So it definitely needs a balm because of that extra thin texture. This is highly pigmented, but can be blotted out to have a little bit more like medium to full pigment if you want, and it has a natural matte finish. This is one that I would consider to be truly long wear, and there is no smell or taste. So this is definitely Definitely one of the best lip stains that has high pigment and that matte finish, but because I just am not obsessed with this shade, it's a bit too bold for me, I won't reach for it again. 13 goes to the Cali Ray SoCal Super Bloom Lip and Cheek Hydrating Soft Stain. I have the shade Wildflower, which is a warm toned peachy pink. This has a whipped gel cream texture that I can wear without a balm. After initially applying, it has medium to full pigment with a glossy finish, and after blotting, it has sheer to light pigment with a sheeny finish. I wouldn't consider this one to be long wear, and in in terms of smell slash taste, there's like maybe the tiniest hint of natural vanilla where it's like that earthier vanilla, but it's not really something that I notice at all when I apply it. This is another that I think I included in a favorites video at one point, but now it's not something that I'll reach for again just because there are other shades in this video that I really like a lot more than this. If I was obsessed with the shade though, I would reach for it again. No, not the dead effing. Not the dead fly. Can you guys see that? That's been in my box the whole time. Gross. I've really got to get my screens on my windows. That is nasty. You nasty. Death by lip stain. Number 12 goes to the Colorgram Juicy Drop Tint, which also comes in this really freaking cute packaging. I have the shades number one and five, both of which are very warm pinks. Number one is quite light, and number five is bolder, a bit deeper, and kind of like a corally warm pink. The these have a really comfortable gel cream texture that is thicker and more conditioning than others, so I do not need to wear a balm with these. Before I blot these, they have medium to full pigment with a glossy finish, and after I blot them, they have sheer to light pigment with a shiny finish. I wouldn't really consider these to be long wear. There's like semblance of color left, but it fades quite a bit. And the smell of this kind of reminds me of Starburst, but it's one of the more subtle fruity scents, and I can't really taste anything. If I really really loved the shades that I picked out in these. I would definitely reach for them again, but I don't, so I won't. 11th place before we break into the top 10 goes to be a Tude Glow Fixing Tint. I have the shades Mellow Pink and Mauve Mint, and Mellow Pink is actually a great way to describe this. This is a mellow pink. It's just like soft and not super bright and bold. And Mauve Mint is a cool toned mauve shade. These have a slightly moussey cream texture that is soft and slippy and definitely are comfortable enough to wear without a balm, but but I would still want one. Before blotting, these have light to medium pigment with a sheeny finish, and after blotting, they have sheer to light pigment with a satin finish. I wouldn't consider these to be long wear, and these do not have any noticeable smell or taste. Or do they? I'm like getting something as I'm sniffing them really hard, but... <laughs> When I'm applying these, I don't notice anything. So these are definitely pretty, but not good enough to hit the top 10 for me, so I don't feel a need to wear these again. In 10th place, we have the Fenty Beauty Poutsicle Hydrating Lip Stain. I have the shade My Type, which is a really pretty warm pink. This has a thin gel texture that feels really nice and comfortable when I'm applying it, but once it dries down, I definitely do need a balm. This is one that dries down pretty quickly for me, so I don't feel the need to blot it, and when it dries down, it has full levels of pigment with a natural matte finish. This is truly long wear and has no smell or taste. So it's one that I will keep in my collection for days when I want a shade just like this. But I do really hope that they come out with more shades in the future because the formula is beautiful. The long wear is super impressive. But all of their shades right now are pretty bold, bright pops of color. And I would love to see something a little bit more subtle. In ninth place, we have the Lily by Red Glassy Layer Fixing Tint. And I have the shades five Rosy Nude, which is a very light pink, six Rosy Rose, which is a deeper warm toned 
pink and 12 muscat shower what the heck is that which is a cool toned kind of purpley shade this is a thinner moussey gel that does have some slip but once it dries down i feel it needs a balm this has light to medium pigment with a shiny finish before i blot it and more light pigment with a satin finish after blotting this is one that i don't think fades as much as some of the others in this video but i still wouldn't consider it to be fully long wear just compared to how it looks when i initially apply it this does have a subtle grape smell and taste but compared to some of the others like romand which is so so intense it's quite subtle. So even though Fenty definitely outperforms these in terms of wear, I'll definitely wear these again because I just love that glossier finish. Number eight goes to the Romand Dewy Full Water Tint. I have the shades 13 Custard Mauve, which is a purpley pink, six Thulean, which is more of a warm toned pink, and seven Cherry Way, which is a really pretty cherry red. Like the Etude Fixing Tints, these also have a moussey gel cream texture, but compared to Etude, they are a little bit thicker and less slippy, so I prefer the way that these feel. I do still need a balm with these, but as you're seeing, I need a balm with pretty much everything, so that's not a huge deal. Before blotting, these have sheer to medium levels of pigment depending on the shade that you choose. The lighter shades do look more sheer and they have a satin finish. After blotting, they have sheer to light pigment, again, depending on the shade and more of a glowy finish. I don't consider these to be long wear and they have no noticeable smell or taste for me. I'll keep these in my collection for now because I do love that glowy effect that they have on my lips, but I get that same effect from a couple other options that I'm gonna talk about in my top seven. So if I were to end up getting more shades in those formulas, then I would eventually get rid of these, but for now I will keep. Number six is the Clio Crystal Glam Tint. I have the shade Pale Plum and it's a really pretty cool toned pink. This is a thinner gel cream, but I find it to be one that is conditioning and I don't need a balm with. Before blotting, I get medium to full pigment with a shiny finish. And after blotting, I get sheer to light pigment with a glowy sheeny finish. I can get longer wear out of this one, but the color shears out a lot. So I don't know that I would say this is like truly a long wear formula and there's not really a smell or taste that I notice when I use this. So this is one that I am definitely keeping. I actually am wearing it right now. I just reapplied if you're wondering why my lips look a little darker. I just love the way that this one feels and I love that I can either have a really nice shiny finish or a beautiful glow. We have made it to the top five. Oh my god, I have been filming for hours. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Blush Cream Lip and Cheek Stain. I have the shade Rosy Kiss, which is like a combination between a rose and a mauve. It's really beautiful and why I initially fell in love with this. Before I tested out any Asian beauty lip tints, I was really trying to find more wearable shades in a lip stain. So I was super excited when I first discovered this. And then I realized that there's a million and one Asian beauty brands that have gorgeous shades of lip stains. But anyway, this has a lightweight cream texture that definitely needs a balm. In retrospect, this is definitely not one that needs to be blotted, but I did blot it just for the sake of getting the footage. So before blotting, I would say it has medium to full pigment with a glowy finish, and after blotting, it has light to medium pigment with more of a natural finish. I can definitely get long wear with this one, and the smell is kind of like cake frosting. That just hit me. I initially wrote down vanilla, but I'm like, mm -mm, this smells like cake frosting, but it's not one that lingers on my lips, so... Take that for what you will. So I will be keeping this one because I do love the shade with the gloss on top. In fourth place, we have a drugstore hit. Milani, I have talked about this before. It is still, I mean, through all of this testing, one of my favorite lip stains. It's the Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain. I have the shade Bitten Berry, which is a relatively deep, reddish berry shade. The texture of this is incredible in my opinion, especially after trying so many that just feel uncomfortable and dry. This is a really nourishing gel cream texture. So I do not need a balm with this one. And before blotting, you can get full levels of pigment with a really nice shiny finish, or you can blot this out to have more light to medium pigment with a sheeny finish. And if you're wondering what the difference is between shiny and sheeny, in my mind, which is an interesting one, shiny is more reflective and glossy and Sheeny is just a more subtle version of that. I can get longer wear with this, but I wouldn't consider this to be like full all day long wear. And this also, oh my God, you guys, this smells like icing too. It's kind of more of like a tart vanilla smell, but now I'm getting icing from it. Yum. It's the kind that I can definitely taste and smell as I apply it, but for me, it doesn't last. So I will definitely be using this again. Like I've said in several videos before, I have to pick up more shades because I do have quite a few shades available and it's one that... 
What was I just gonna say? <laughs> oh my God, I have to wrap this up. It's one that I wanna keep using, okay. Oh, let's knock into the top three, y'all, let's do it. Third place. You may think that I'm a hypocrite because this is one, okay, let me just, let me do what I was doing and then I'll get into it. This is the 3CE Blur Water Tint. I have the shade Double Wind, which is stunning. I am obsessed with this shade. It's also like a mix between a rose and a mauve, but it's deeper. This has a lightweight cream texture that does have more of that wet feel at first, but dries down to feel powdery and a bit dry. So it's definitely something that I need a balm on top of and it dries down very quickly. So it's not really one that makes sense to be blotted. For me, this is very versatile in terms of pigmentation. I can use this and have a light amount of pigment or I can build it up to have full pigment. And this has a natural matte finish. Even though this ended up looking quite patchy after eating, I can get longer wear with this one. And the smell is super, super subtle. It's like barely there sweetness. So the reason why I said that you might think I'm a hypocrite for putting this in third place is because it can have that like full pigment matte effect. But since I'm always putting a gloss on top of these things and I can sheer this out, I am obsessed with how it looks when I I do that. That kind of hurt. And I also feel like this gives me that glowy effect. So ever since I tried this out, I just have not been able to stop reaching for it, which obviously says a lot because I've got 32 freaking lip stains in front of me. We're almost done. In second place, wait, <laughs> I counted wrong. No. You guys, I've been saying the wrong numbers this entire video. It's 34 <laughs> lip stains, not 32. Oh my God. I'm not refilming this for the numbers. I'm not. So <laughs> I was gonna say, I scrolled up a little and I was like, I don't remember putting that as the winner of this showdown. It's cause it's not. <sighs> anyway, it's fine. What matters the most is that I have been talking about these in rank order, even though I have been saying the number wrong. <laughs> God. In actual fourth place, we have the Rare Beauty Tinted Lip Oil. This is not a tinted lip oil. This is a lip stain. So that is why it's in this video. I love, love, love this. I have the shade Wonder, which really I think was the catalyst for me being drawn to these slightly darker raspberry-like pink shades. This is just oh, so pretty. I would have never reached for a shade like this before trying this out. Oh my God, not the dead fly. This has a gel cream texture that is very comfortable and doesn't need a balm. Before blotting it out, it has medium to full pigment with a shiny finish. And after blotting, it has light to medium pigment with a satin finish. I would consider this one to be truly long wear. I think it definitely holds up very impressively compared to a lot of these other options. And there's no noticeable smell or taste for me. So this is absolutely one that's staying in my collection. It's another that I reach for all the time. I love the shade. I love how it feels. It's just a beautiful product, even though it's not a tinted lip oil. It's just not. Okay. This is what I was saying. I don't remember putting this in first place, but it's an amazing product. In third place is the e.l.f. Glossy Lip Stain, which I have a lot of. I have the shades Fiery Red, Spicy Sienna, Berry Queen, Pinkies Up, and Power Mauve. So many pretty shades go off e.l.f. This has a super slick gel texture that I find to be really comfortable. I definitely don't need a balm with this. This has medium to full pigment with a shiny finish before blotting and after blotting, it has light to medium pigment with a satin finish. Given the shiny finish that this has, I did not think it was going to last long on me, but I can definitely get long wear with this. And this really doesn't have any smell or taste, so this is absolutely one that I'm keeping in my collection. I think this is such a good product, which is hilarious because the first time that I reviewed it, I think it was in a new at the drugstore video, I was like, what the heck is this? This feels so weird. It's wet. And it's like, yeah, girl, it's a lip stain. I just, I, I didn't have experience with this category category yet and now it's like my favorite makeup category ever. The only thing I wish they would change about this is the packaging. I really don't like how tiny it is. Like this makes me not want to reach for it. Even if it was just a little bit bigger like this. But that's okay, because it's great. Second place, oh my love. Gunza mommy. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I'm losing my mind right now. This is the longest video I filmed in a long time. In second place is the beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, Peri Para, pe what? Peri Para Water Bear Tint. I have two shades. The first is 07, which is a really pretty mauve pink. And the second is actually my favorite, surprisingly. It is 05, which is like a reddish, rosy pink. This is a thin gel cream with a slightly watery consistency and even though it does feel 
really comfortable at first. I do need a balm for this once it fully dries. I can really shear this out or build it up so I get sheer to full pigment depending on how much I use. And this is one that has that beautiful glowy effect on the lips. It's also a little bit sheeny, definitely not glossy or shiny, but paired with that glow, oh my God. These are not long wear, so if that is one of the main things you're after in a lip stain, then I wouldn't go for this, but I have no issue reapplying. And these have like a little bit of a fruity taste when I'm sniffing it like this, but it's not something I notice when I'm applying it. Did I say taste? I meant smell. Hello? Help. So I 100% will be using these again. I just think there is something so special and beautiful about them. I love it. Oh my God, we made it. First place and the winner of this 34 lip stain showdown is the Peri Para Ink Mood Glow Tint. I have the shades three and 10. 10 is a light cool toned pink and three is my personal favorite. It's like a rosy pink. This has a comfortable thin gel cream texture that does not need a balm. It has light to medium pigment. Before blotting, it has a shiny finish and after blotting, it has that gorgeous glowy finish. This is also not a long wear option and this, I'm smelling like sweet caramel, but again, it's one that I didn't notice anything while applying, no taste for me. So I have officially found my favorite lip stain and that again is because of the gorgeous glowy effect that these give on my lips. I just feel like there's no other lip product out there that can do quite the same thing. Like you're not gonna get that with lipstick. You won't get that with a lip oil. It's just such a uniquely beautiful look, which is why these are first place for me. But obviously they're definitely not gonna be everyone else's first place because again, they're not long wear. That might be the most important thing to you which again is why I love doing showdowns like this because I give you all of the information that you need to know about all of these products. I rank them for those of you that are curious to know what my favorites and least favorites are, but ultimately I create these to help you to figure out which product in a given category is going to be the best fit for you. So I really hope you were able to find that in this video. Holy crap. That's it for this 34 34 lip stain showdown. If you enjoyed this, please, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell, send my channel to a friend. All of those things help to support my channel and I appreciate that so much because I obviously put my heart and soul into preparing these videos for you guys. They take a lot of work, but I wanna continue delivering them if they continue to be helpful for you. Let me know your thoughts on all of these in the comments below. What looks like your perfect kind of lip stain, everything is going to be listed in LinkedIn order of mention. Don't you worry. Thank you for watching my videos. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much. I love the freaking heck out of you. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy on my soul.